now join together for our gathering hymn on this Lord's Day. Uh, the hymn is Glorious Things of You Are Spoken, number 647. If you want to follow along in your hymn books, number 647. As you are able, you may write. <laughs>
In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. I invite the kids to come forward. Okay. So Jesus tells a story of a landowner who went to his fig tree looking for fruit on it. For three years he looked on there, and he didn't find any. So he talked to his gardener, and he said to the gardener, this fruit tree, this fig tree is just taking up space. I want you to pull it out, dig it up and pull it out. And the gardener says, oh, wait a minute, sir, wait a minute. Just give me one more year, and I'll dig around the fig tree, and I'll put some fertilizer on it. And then if any year it produces fruit, that's great. But if not, then you can tear it down. So the gardener bought extra time for that fig tree. Well, Jesus tells us this story not because we're like trees that can bear fruit out of our fingers or something. You know, we can't grow fruit out of our fingertips. But we can bear the fruit of God's kingdom, which is the fruit of love and patience and kindness and peace, all of those things that the Bible tells us. So God wants us to bear that fruit. And the good news is that Jesus, who is our gardener, our caretaker gardener, he has bought for us time. He has bought for us grace so that we can bear God's fruit and, and not be torn down, as the parable says. Okay? So this parable teaches us that God is a God of second chances. So if you make a mistake, if you do things that are wrong sometimes, God is a God of second chances. And Jesus shows us that in his parable, okay? So put your hands together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us so many things, just like in his parable of the barren fig tree. God, help us to know that you are a God of second chances, and that you will give us a second chance to bear the fruit of your kingdom. And we thank you so much for Jesus, who is the one who has allowed that for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back. As you are able, you may rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
for our Bible reading. Here ends the second lesson. Thanks be to God. 
As you're able, you may rise for our Lenten Gospel affirmation and the reading of the Gospel. There's some wisdom in there. 
Okay, this next one I'm sure all of you know. Good fences make for good what? Neighbors. neighbors. Yes. Good fences make for good neighbors. So here's another fence one that some of you might know. Be sure your fences are horse high, pig tight, and bull strong. Did any of you know that one? Yeah. Make sure your fences are horse high, pig tight, and bull strong. Okay, here's another one, and this is very good here. Uh, letting a cat out of the bag is a whole lot easier than putting it back in again. <laughs> That's some wisdom for sure, right? Uh, I like this next one. Life is much easier when you plow around the stump. <laughs> trying to go through it, right? Okay, this one's pretty good. Keep skunks and politicians at a distance. <laughs> oh, I really like this next one. Don't corner something you know is meaner than you are. Okay, just a few more here. Only the smallest people carry the biggest grudges. That's pretty profound. Uh, this one I know all of us know. When you wallow with pigs, expect to get what? Dirty. That's right. Uh, this one is very good. Every single path in life has a few puddles in it. You can't find one without. And then this last one is my favorite. Always drink upstream from the herd. <laughs> good words, good words. So this list is good, solid farmer wisdom. It's tried and true wisdom that we can all count on when we need it. And in today's gospel reading, we hear our Lord Jesus Christ share the saving message of his grace and truth through some farmer wisdom, through a parable of the barren fig tree. Now the fig tree, like many of the fruit-bearing trees that are made for desert climates, usually takes a little longer to bear fruit compared to the fruit-bearing trees of wetter climates. As a matter of fact, a fig tree growing in a non-irrigated, arid location often takes about three years after reaching maturity before it can bear good quality fruit. Also, interestingly, in the laws of the Old Testament, the first three fruit-bearing years of a tree were known as the years of forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. That's from Leviticus 19, where it was forbidden to eat of that tree's fruit for those three years. And in our parable from Jesus today, we learn that the landowner had been coming to the fig tree for three years looking for fruit on it. So, brothers and sisters, we have to understand what the agrarian audience of Jesus' day and age would have automatically understood, that this is in fact the ninth year since the fig tree was planted. The first three years were the time for the fig tree to reach full fruit-bearing maturity. Then, the next three years were the years of forbidden fruit, according to Leviticus. And lastly, the landowner had been coming for three more years, seeking good fruit, but finding none, it says. So the landowner decides that it's finally time to cut this tree down. Why should it be wasting the soil, he says. In other words, the fig tree has been using up valuable land area for nine long, unfruitful years. But, wonderfully, the gardener intercedes. The gardener intercedes on behalf of the fig tree, saying, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put fertilizer on it. Now, according to all of the Bible commentaries that I read this week, this application of extra fertilizer to this fig tree would have been unusual, and it indicates here an extraordinary level of care for this particular fig tree. Also, by the way, in ancient Hebrew wisdom literature, different attributes of God's own self would often be portrayed 
as debating each other concerning various issues of spirituality and morality. And this is exactly what Jesus does here. This is exactly what he's doing in our parable for today. In this parable, two attributes of God are debating with each other about what should happen with the barren fig tree. The landowner is God's justice, and the gardener is God's mercy, and they are debating what to do with the fig tree. Therefore, as the fig tree is a biblical symbol, a prominent biblical symbol for the people of God, then what we're seeing in this parable are these two aspects of God, God's justice and God's mercy, debating about what to do about us. We're seeing God's justice and mercy in this parable, debating about what to do about all of us, brothers and sisters. And of course, as Christians, we certainly can see the Holy Trinity at work in this parable as well. With the landowner as the Heavenly Father, the gardener as the Son of God, and the fertilized soil, that renewed, tilled, fertilized soil as the Holy Spirit. So, the whole point of this parable of our Lord Jesus, because Christ, our gardener, our caretaker gardener, we are living under a divine grace period. A time of forbearance, above and beyond the metaphorical wasted time of our parable. Like we see in Jesus' parable today, the righteous justice of God is stirred when we do not bear the fruit of the Spirit as He would like us to bear it. But the overabundant mercy of God, that other aspect of God, persuades the justice of God to grant further grace, further nurture, and further care for each and every one of us. Thanks be to God for that. And this is also what the Apostle Paul speaks about in our Bible reading from 1 Corinthians 10 today. He essentially says that God's grace and forbearance is meant to lead us to repentance. It's meant to lead us to repentance and renewal and lives that bear the fruit of faithfulness, morality, gratitude, and patience. But unfortunately, God's graciousness can lead us to think that God is indulgent. It can lead many people to think errantly that God is an indulgent God. So Paul writes very clearly, we must not put Christ to the test, he says. Rather, the life of a believer and follower of Christ is to be marked by daily repentance, by daily confession of our sins, by daily dying and rising to new life in Christ. So just like the fig tree that has been given another chance in Jesus' parable today, each and every day of our lives in Christ is a day of pure grace. Each and every day is a day of new chances. Jesus tells the story of the barren fig tree to form a vivid picture of what life his disciples will live. It is a Christian life of extraordinary grace where we're nurtured by His Word and sacrament over and over and over again for us to bear the fruit of His Spirit. So as followers of Jesus Christ, we must continually live in repentance because we are God's fig tree. We are the people of God. We are God's fig tree planted for an intended divine purpose. And anything other than this is just a waste of space and a waste of time. For as we hear in our Bible reading today, again from 1 Corinthians, when we forget who we are and what our purpose is, we can slip into harmful idolatries and immoralities. And apart from Almighty God, our life stories and life journeys do not amount to the hill of beings. Our life stories and life, life journeys apart from God become like barren fig trees to 
to be rooted up. Brothers and sisters, the purpose of our existence is rooted in the soil of God. For there is no greater meaning and no greater blessing than to live a life in relationship with the one almighty God of all and for the sake of his kingdom in our lives and for the world. This is most certainly true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for congregational councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk for wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for endangered animal habitats, merciful God, receive our prayer. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for those who uplift a vision of a more compassionate, upright, and ethical society, Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We pray for all our partners in mission, Bailey Human Care Center, Food and Clothing Ministry, Door of Hope Ministry for Homeless Families, Fred Jordan Missions for the Homeless, Walter Hoving Home Women's Shelter Ministry, Fair Trade LA Congregational Coffee Campaign, Linda Gawthorne of Wycliffe Bible Translators and the Kogi People, Tahonga Camp of the Gideons, the LA County Beekeepers, Pastor Jack and the VRIM Korean Presbyterian Church, our Willoughby Preschool, our Scout Pack 307, Bishop Brenda and our Southwest California Synod, and Presiding Bishop Elizabeth and our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Merciful God. For those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing, especially Brandon, Shannon, Chris, Elsie, John, the family friends of Sharon Great Ennis, Bruce, Brenda, Lorna, Alex, Eulalia and Audrey, Secret Kites, Chad, Penny, Carl, Kevin Reardon, Carrie, Sandy, Ruth, Lori, Chuck, Nanette, Sam, the family and friends of Ron Ricketts, Jane, Dwayne, Ellen, Gary, Quentin, and the family and friends of Lynn Swan, Ruth, and the family and friends of Jeff Thresher, Margaret, Robert, all of our men and women in military service and law enforcement, our firefighters and paramedics, our governing authorities and veterans, all of our fellow congregation members who are not able to join us in worship, and all of our family members and friends who are on our hearts. Merciful God, for the advocacy efforts of this congregation, for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths, and engage in difficult conversations. For those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation, merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. For those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. With all your saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. O oh God, accept these and other prayers we bring on behalf of a world in need, for your glory and our benefit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As you are able, you may rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after that supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink. Saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread of life and drink this cup of salvation, we proclaim the Lord's sacrificial death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We'll now pray together our offertory prayer. Extravagant God,
we can sing all verses of the next hymn. <coughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. It's number 618 in your red hymnal.